servers and water don't mix, but they do when it comes to server pools, a byproduct of vast disaggregated shared everything architecture that makes it possible to consolidate all of your workloads onto one storage system. And I'm going to explain how. Okay, so as we've talked about in other videos, vast disaggregated shared everything architecture, one of the principal advantages that we bring to the table is what we've done is eliminated any east-west traffic within a distributed scale-out storage system. Thanks to NVMe over fabrics and uh, a shared everything data structure that we've engineered into scalable and low-cost flash, it becomes possible for every single machine in our cluster to get a global view of the underlying system state such that no two machines need to talk to each other at all in the synchronous write or read path. And so the architecture is just inherently scalable as a result of that. And when we started, we basically traveled the world and told customers, hey, you should just put all of your data into one big, vast system. And the customers, in particular, a few of them that were deploying very, very high-scale computing environments, they basically said, that's ridiculous. We would never do that because you don't want to have all of the users suffer when one heavyweight application comes in and just pounds on some shared storage system. And this, of course, is a real reason why people have avoided consolidating infrastructure in the past, but it's also a very avoidable problem with this new days architecture. Okay, so how does it work? Well, with just a few lines of code, we realized that we could break these servers into resource groups that we call pools. There is no water in them. Sorry to break your, burst your bubble. And these pools, um, they essentially are composable units of CPUs, arguably the cheapest part of the system, that can be broken into just different resource groups that allows for multi-tenant or multi-application environments to get dedicated ingress and egress traffic along these hardware boundaries. And so it becomes a really nice way to isolate different users from each other by just portioning off the lowest cost part of the hardware infrastructure, the servers, into discrete units that you can scale up or scale down as you like via API. So very composable, programmatically deployable, and people say, okay, well, if I've got all these contention, contending users that are each accessing via their own pools, well then, what happens down at the SSDs? And if you think about a modern NVMe device, you've got something like 500,000 IOPS that are supportable by each device. From a, a hardware perspective, they're designed to support ultimate levels of contention. The contention really kicks in when you have multiple interleaving styles of I.O. happening at the CPU level. So by kind of creating independent uh, elements that all kind of like um, support different competing applications within your environment, you solve for this noisy neighbor problem. One of the other really cool things about pools is it also allows you to service different networks from a common storage cluster. So let's say, for example, oops, that's Ethernet. Let's say you had a, an Ethernet cluster and an InfiniBand cluster, all that needed shared access to a big file system or a big object storage system. It becomes possible to do that with this pooling concept in a way where you don't need a special, a special network gateways or you don't need additional proxies to kind of manage data across these different clusters. Every cluster can get precisely the number of CPUs that it needs and each thinks that it has its own dedicated storage environment because it has its own dedicated controllers. So that's pooling in uh, a few minutes. And uh, if you have more questions about it, of course, you can read more online at vastdata.com. If you want to talk to us, just hit the chat button and start having a conversation today. Thank you.